What's up, low heat sneakerheads? I was trying to think what is something that we need more of on YouTube than unboxing videos. And I was like, you know what? There's not enough cat videos on YouTube. So today we're unboxing a cat. Okay. Joke's over. All right. You've done your intro. You've done your part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not. Don't worry. It's not a cruelty to animals video. So today we have a very, very special pair. Kind of hype. Uh, that being said, these are super affordable. At You can find them at retail on some sites, maybe still. And if you can't, they're going for uh, retail prices on the on the on the secondary market. Some maybe even below retail. So we have a, a this rare occurrence of a hype hype pair of sneakers that you can afford which you know again that's pretty rare these days so hope you enjoy the video um and uh yeah definitely as you as we unbox these and you're if you're interested check out the various uh resale platforms ebay stockx goat what have you okay we need to unbox this now thank you thank you sharp objects incoming all right all right let's go all right sharp object children stay away from the knives please all right very excited so i got these where i get these uh, sneaker politics out of uh you know texas and i think they have a shop in louisiana i've never been but uh obviously i know about them through all the raffles that they do they are a you know streetwear uh retail store and sneaker store and i've never hit on a raffle from them i'm pretty sure i've never hit on a raffle from them definitely for nothing super hype uh and these semi-hype actually hit on them but judging by the resale prices i guess they just aren't as hot of a commodity anymore and so maybe that's why i got them so let's see here very exciting we'll have to definitely check out the packaging let's get rid of this Bring the main star in, not the cat, although some of you may argue. So, as you know from the video and from the box, these are the Salehi Bembury New Balance collab, specifically the 574 um, model, is size 11 and a half, and these are the yurts, the 574 Salehi Bembury yurts um so he recently did, was on the complex sneakers podcast really great listen uh definitely suggest you check it out i'll try to link it in the description maybe and gives a lot of dope information on his background um and the story of pitching these to new balance really good stories and uh also you know slay he also does the design work on his packaging too i mean some sometimes you might go to a foregone conclusion but not necessarily. Also, designers usually have lots of teams under them if they're well, if they're established, especially if they're getting their own name and signature, not signature shoe, but collab. Usually they have a, a team of designers helping them. But uh, as he said on the podcast, he does all, all of that stuff on his own, really. So, um, and like, you know, all the actual design work within the various programs, uh, etc. he's doing that stuff. So... Shouts to him on a job well done. And these are actually the Peace Be the Journey is, is the name of this collection. The first collaborative project between Slay Bembry and New Balance Athletics. So he did the 2002 R's. I wonder if that's that was just released first or if that... And so this was the first project, or if this is maybe the New Balance Athletics is a different wing of New Balance. If you know, please let me know in the comments uh, why this is the first collaborative project, even though those 2002 R's were definitely came out first. Those are sick. Um, this will be my first pair of 574s. Very excited to unbox these. So without further ado, subscribe first. Subscribe first. Almost forgot. That. I always almost forget that. Gotta plug the channel. Um, here we go. Ooh. Dope. Dope illustration inside. I love it. That's really cool. 
There's a good view of it. Um, so I also am going to talk a little bit about this uh, recent trend in streetwear fashion of of outdoor aesthetic. I I have a couple opinions on that, but uh, let's see the shoes first. I know that's what you're here for. So, whoa, 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 whoa! Look, man, these are wild. Look at these. These are some chonky boys. These are way chonkier than I thought. Man, very interesting. A lot of details. Uh, if you're watching this, I appreciate you because there's probably a million videos unboxing these. So I appreciate you clicking on mine, taking the time to watch, listen to what I have to say uh, when there's all these other videos out there. Um, so first off, little reflective hits there. On the toe box very cool it also has this webbed um, mesh nylon upper that you saw in these 2002 R's had a very similar uh, webbed pattern on them you can see it here around the ankle we'll get to the the whistle in a, in a second here but let's point out some other things first um, you know this very robust sole outsole and with some thick traction uh, Slay, he is big into hiking. He posts hiking videos all the time um, on his Instagram account from him hiking around the mountainous areas here in LA. So he's definitely designs with that in mind, function and and aesthetic. It's got the Absorb technology in the midsole. These like bright reflective like bubble hits on the back. Interesting. Or at least they're shiny. I don't know if they're reflective. I think they are reflective. A roller bar support cage there. Uh, I'm not sure where that is, but this definitely gives support. Purple mud guard here. And I think that's like synthetic leather. And then you have this very hairy suede uh, as part of the upper, which was also seen, I think, on his 2002R New Balance. Up here on the tongue, you have the New Balance Yurt 574, and you got his name uh, as a tag right there. Very cool. Let's pull out the stuffing there. There you got the insole with his name on it also, and his signature. That's kind of his signature is the his, his thumbprint or fingerprint right there. Uh, interesting uh, dimpled, dimpled insole, like... Uh, like uh, what you put on a bed, you know, extra cushion on the foam eggshell bedding for extra comfort and support. Here's the other one, just to make sure that they're the same. So he told a great story on the podcast. Uh, again, check it out. Uh, but he was they were, he was saying that he grabbed i think a 574 cut out a hole and put a whistle in it and during the pitch meeting he explained he explained to for them to imagine the story of you're out camping hiking with a group of friends and it's getting towards dusk and you see a group of deer you stop to take a photo and as you put your camera down your friends are gone you can't find them anywhere they've disappeared and uh you have a sense of panic and dread but then you pull up the shoe Pull up the shoe, and he get, and he and he whistled into the shoe in the meeting, and uh, apparently everyone everyone loved it. Shoot, I forgot to show you here. I'll show you what's on this one. So that's his name, and it says "Remove in case of emergency," which is great. Love it. So I, you know, I classically if you if you watch any of my videos, I do them in this POV uh, shot right here. So I'm never really on camera much at all i think one video i am so i will try to demonstrate this but uh let's let's see here i can't blow the whistle loud because uh people are up in my house and i'm doing this for you people if you watch this within the first week and a half of me publishing it it's for you people because i am flying to stockholm bright and early in the morning i'm doing this video late at night so i can make sure it gets up uh, as soon as possible before I leave uh, for a week and a half. So this is for you people if you watch it in the first week and a half. Give me a subscribe. Let's try to blow this this whistle right here. Like, you know, 
at a low volume, and we'll see what it sounds like. You get the idea. Could you see my, my tongue? Anyways, I'm sure it sounds very whistly. He's uh, posted, I think it's genius. I, he said in the podcast he didn't intend for it to like go viral or all these videos to be posted of people uh, blowing on the whistle of these shoes. But, you know, happy, happy accident. I think it uh, was a great, you know, it's genius. Uh, maybe not planned, but it turned out to be genius marketing. So I love it that there's an added function to these, an added tool, if you will. And uh, I just think that's a great idea because it, it, uh, a safety whistle or a rescue whistle is something that, you know, if you get lost out hiking, out camping, it is a very, uh, you know, useful tool because uh, you can't just yell all day, you'll you lose your voice. So real quick, I wanted to comment on uh, the the culture of the camp, you know, the outdoors culture blending into Hype beast culture. I think as I try these on, I'll try these on as I do this. <clears throat> I'm wearing these 920 made in made in England. Uh, these are so fire. Check out my unboxing video of these. Uh, this might be my favorite New Balance. I love these so much. And in the video, actually, I got these in a place replacement box, and I was like, why? Are these, why is the price? Why is the price on these so cheap? And then someone in the comments pointed out because you're. Because you, you have a 574, they put them in a 574 box. These are 920s. Like, oh, yeah. Which brings me to the point of these uh, 574s are definitely a cheaper model for New Balance. Uh, so that there's that. I forget how much these were. 140 I think. Plus tax shipping and stuff. These definitely aren't in the 200 range that some New Balances are. Anyways, this is a great shoe. Check out that unboxing. So... Uh, as I was saying, um, outdoors wear has become popular in the streetwear culture. It has been for a while, but I'm just, you know, definitely at its peak right now, I would say. Brands like, you know, uh, Jordan and Nike and Adidas, they've all brought in collaborators or done lines themselves uh, to that have all had themes about going outside. I mean, Joe Fresh Goods had outside clothes. Union has done a couple of their Jordan collabs, the Jordan 4s, with an outdoors theme and hiking theme to it. Definitely uh, New Balance with Slahey. There's just been, you know, uh, Sean Witherspoon definitely has a, you know, outdoors vibe uh, to his aesthetic and, and everything. So I I don't think that's bad. There's been ACG crossovers into crossovers into the other uh, areas of Nike I definitely don't think it's a it's a bad trend um, I think there you can fall into two pools I think some people look down on people who wear wear uh, outdoors can't was it gorp core um, who might wear something that is designed for outdoor use, but they wear it as fashion, as streetwear. And then vice versa, I think there's, you know, people who just wear, you know, people who just wear that this stuff and have no intentions of going hiking or using it outdoors. I'm right in the middle. I, I would not say I'm an expert camper or hiker or do it all the time, but I also own camping gear and do go hiking well, if you can call it hiking, I go on trails in LA, you know, once a month. So I'm right in the middle and I feel like people need to, you know, as in everything in life, um, not be so extreme. I feel like people who really do outdoor stuff a lot, who are experts, who are avid hikers or campers, should not gatekeep people who want to wear this stuff. They should encourage them to use it. And, um, you know, try some of the intended activities or embrace the theme more than just wearing it um, to work or to coffee shops. But at the same time, um, so I, I definitely don't think there should be any sort of gatekeeping going on. But at the same time, if you are a person to wear a lot of ACG Gore-Tex, you know, hiking footwear Solomons, you know, why you, you should take it out for a spin in the intended, um, either in the intended setting 
or embrace the theme of it. You know, no one's really wearing Jordan Fo Union Jordan Desert Moss Jordan Force to go hiking in. But you know what? Uh, the inspiration behind it was, uh, you know, hiking and camping. You know, embrace that theme. What I do is all those outdoor theme stuff. I have like, you know, ACG blazers. Um, you know, a lot of the Nike stuff isn't like functionally uh, for use outdoors. You can, but it's not really like top tier um you know technology for some of that stuff i wear it you know on the drive to the campground I, I wear it as walking shoes throughout the national park exhibits and then when i get on the trail i throw on something that's more meant for trail use i do think these in particular are a little bit of a crossover i don't think the 574 is really a hiking shoe but i think what slay he did here is he reinforced the outsole is a really rugged durable outsole with a wide platform and base you can take these on a trail i think you know i mean of course you can but you get, you know what i'm getting at i think these would be very functional let's say that on a trail comfortable and functional so i think that's it that's a really good move and like i said if if you if you are a outdoorsman woman, live in the woods and only use high end gear and beat it up to death, that's great. Uh, but don't shun those who uh, might wear this to the subway. Encourage people to use that stuff outdoors, you know, or you know, go camping, and vice versa. Like I said. If you if you're really into uh, Gore-Tex stuff like I am, you know, take it out in the rain once in a while, or uh, visit, um, go camping once and use some of this stuff outdoors. That would be my suggestion. Try it out. So I think let's get back to these. End of rant. These are great. Uh, Eleven and a half, true to size. I think these fit perfect. Uh, you. Maybe could go half size down. I wouldn't. I, I, I tend not to want to do that nowadays. Maybe it's my age. I just don't want things that are too tight, cramped, toes bent. I just don't like that feeling. Claustrophobic feet. So I think true to size is perfect. I would be hesitant going a half size up on these. Uh, I think true to size is just, just right. Um, so yeah. And these look really dope on foot. I, there's four other colorways of these. Uh, I'm not really a black shoe guy, but in my older age, I've been, uh, getting more and more accustomed to all black shoes and digging them. And I really like these. So I don't have many all black shoes in my collection. I'm glad to add these though. And these aren't really all black. There's hits of other colors, but you know, you, you get what I mean. I, I really like these. I, I don't know. In some ways I, I, they're not what I thought they would be, and in other ways, they're better than I thought they would be. So let's give these a rating. I think these are, hmm, huh, I think these, I give these like a 7.75, 7.75 out of 10. I think these are dope, and I'm excited to actually use these on a trail, because I, I thought these would be more like, oh, like I'm talking about, where it's just the aesthetic is outdoors or trail running or what have you and they're not really functionally meant for them or best for them i should say um but these now having them in hand uh these are uh, these are pretty rugged so i will be eventually using these outdoors and i will report back maybe eventually if i give them enough wears maybe with a wear review let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a wear review of these but very excited to put these to the test. I think Slahey is a really smart dude, really great designer, and that's, uh, I think it's uh, pretty sick that designers are getting uh, their own collabs and shoes. You just didn't see that, you know, years ago, and now, now it's becoming regular, and I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's great. So, all right. Subscribe for more Low Heat. Appreciate you watching. Be back with some more videos soon.